Hey, what's up guys, Nature, and welcome to this Sonic Academy tutorial series. This is our beginner's guide to Cubase 13 course. Now this is a multi-series course divided into two levels. Now, if you've completed level one, uh, you are in the right place. This level two series is gonna expand on what we did in the first level one course. Uh, we're gonna be working on the track as we left it before. Uh, we're gonna take a look at side chaining. We're gonna set up auxiliary effect sends. We're gonna take a look at some advanced routing. We're gonna shape our sound further with more of the plugins inside of Cubase, continue with the mix down before eventually mastering our track at the end of the series. All right, so without further ado, let's get into Cubase and get our track sorted. I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers. All right, welcome back, guys. So we are jumping in where we left off with our level one track. We're going to take a look at some more advanced mixing techniques now. Uh, first, I want to just discuss uh, routing. We briefly touched on that in level one where we set up a few buses uh, in these group channels. So we had our folder tracks uh, and our drums bus that we have. Uh, if we look at our channels here, we'll click the edit button to open up the channel window or have a look on the left hand side here. If you don't see the routing, you can of course set up the sections, make sure that routing is selected. Uh, let's bring up the channel window as well. Uh, you can see at the top here that we have our percussion loop here is routed to the output is going to the drums bus. And our drums bus, if we look at the same thing here, the output is going to the stereo out. Great, that's how you follow the routing of buses. Uh, now we're also going to be looking at auxiliary tracks or send or effects tracks in Cubase as they're called. Um, these are similar to buses, however they return audio as well, so the audio is sent to them and then returned back after being processed. Uh, they're most often used for reverbs and such, uh, but there's plenty of other ways that you can use them, either via direct um, routing as well. Um, and this sort of routing via the sends is very much the same way that we do sidechain compression as well, uh, albeit slightly different with the newer versions of Cubase. Let's just take a look at setting up a reverb first. If we wanted to um, have a reverb set up for our drums here that we could apply to various different elements. Uh, we could right click on this one, this would send automatically the entire drum mix to the reverb. We don't necessarily want to do that. We want to be able to adjust the reverb separately for each of these in here. What I'm going to do is uh, just any one of these tracks, we're just going to right click around here and say add track and we're going to go effect. You could also select this one, which is FX channel to selected channels. Uh, this one is going to create your FX channel channel and then automatically set a send from the clap channel that we have now selected, sending full wet to that reverb. Uh, we're going to do this the other way and just create the effect here for now. And I've got revelation uh, selected here. It's the built-in reverb in Cubase 13. I'll click add track. Right, so Revelation has popped up for us. You may be wondering what's happened to our actual effects track though. If you come down, you'll see it's in this effects channels by default it'll put it down there. We don't have to leave it there, we can move it right out. Uh, and since this is going to be one that is being set up just for the drums, I would actually prefer to have that over here uh, so that we can see what we're doing. It's still an FX track. It doesn't have to be in this folder. This is purely just a automatic folder that gets created when you add an FX track. Let's close that down for now. I'm going to solo this entire section of drums here. Let's play back a section here. So it's completely dry right now. So let's dive in and start sending some of these signals to the reverb that we have here. We haven't set the reverb up yet. We'll do that in just a sec. Let's, uh, for instance, we'll take a look at this shaker, I think. So just the shaker and we'll open up the channel window once again. Again, you can do it from the side too. We're interested in these sends here. So to route audio around to auxiliary, ch auxiliary channels, we're gonna be using sends. So we're going to click here and we're going to go to FX01 Revelation. Uh, this will be whatever you name this. Just call this Drum Reverb if you want. And we come back to our shaker. You'll see it has been renamed. So it's been routed to that one now. It's currently not enabled. We need to turn that on. So now the send is on and let's listen to what the shaker sounds like now.
And there we go. You see now when I soloed that, because the send is active, it automatically soloed the drum reverb as well and the group channel, which this one is being sent to, so that you always hear the soloed track. Right, so we play that back now. And we have reverb applied. So we can adjust this, send more signal to it. We can have less. There's a couple of other controls here that you should be aware of too. If you click this one, you'll have the option to reselect different sends. You can actually add in more here. You can also pan your sends left and right. So we could send just the left signal of a given channel to a reverb, uh, which may be a stereo channel, for example. The other thing that we have here is uh, the post fader send. Now this is important as well. Um, what this is, is the signal that is being sent to the reverb is derived from whatever's coming out after the fader, so post fader, which means that if I adjusted my fader, if we played this back, it send maximum weight to the reverb. Take a listen to what happens to the signal now when I pull this down. So both the shaker and the reverb are reducing in volume. If I set this to pre, what happens now is that we actually send the signal, if you consider that the signal comes through here, it goes through here, and then into this, and then through the fader. What we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna bypass the fader entirely. We're gonna send the signal from here. Whatever's happening here with the EQ, it's gonna go from there without getting the fader, and it's gonna be sent there. That means that the only way that you could turn the volume down is by actually inserting a plugin, which would turn the volume down. If we do this now, you can hear we, we're getting rid of the dry signal because the dry signal is controlled by this fader, but the reverb is still there, so we're getting just the tail of the reverb uh, by itself. You hear that? Just reverb, bring that back. We've got the dry signal being mixed in again. So that is pre and post uh, fader sends. Let's dial in the settings of the reverb, a quick little way to get to the reverb. Now, without having to go out of this and go and select the reverb, you can just right-click on this one and say Edit Effect Revelation. We want something nice and short, I think, for this. Let's just see if we can find a preset in here. We'll look for something, a uh, drum or a room. Let's check out our live stage, Let's studio room. We'll go with the studio room here, for example. Let's go studio room natural. There we go, that's pretty nice. Uh, now we don't want too much reverb on this, so let's just dial this back slightly. And that's providing a nice bit of ambience for that shaker for us. We can continue to do this with the other ones as well. Uh, if you're gonna apply reverb to all of these, of course, what we can do is bring up the mixer page. Let's select all our drum parts. And let's bring down our sins. Now we don't have them enabled here right now. So let's again come over to this page and enable sins. And we can, on all of these, select the drum reverb whilst holding down Shift and Alt. And there we go. Shift and Alt again. Open these up. We'll do all of them post fader. And let's sew some of these in here, what we've got. Maybe a little bit more in the loop that we have. Now you don't have to have just one effect, you don't have to have just the reverb there. A good idea would be to EQ this as well. Uh, we can EQ that with the pre's as well. And if you wanted to do this uh, post, we could just bring in an EQ in the channel strip. Just use the studio EQ, yeah. And we could cut out the lows of the reverb, for example. Or adjust the tone of the reverb. Right, so there we go. Now, there's also a reason why I moved this drum verb in here, aside from just having it around so that it's close to editing and such. Um, because this is a drum reverb, and I wanted to be able to use the reverb with different drum sounds within our group bus, I don't necessarily want to use this with everything in the track. Also, when I'm exporting stems, uh, you will need to export the reverbs as well, additionally, because they actually are going to a different place. Currently, as it is right now, if you open this one up, you can see that this is going to the stereo out. So if we were to render the output of the drums bus, 
uh, we wouldn't actually be getting the reverb uh, because that's going to a separate output. Uh, so what I like to do with uh, reverbs like this, when they're comp contained within a folder and a group system like this, um, I want to contain the reverb for the drums within the drums bus. Uh, so you can do that again by using the direct outputs here. We'll go to the output and select drums. So now what we have is that the reverb output is actually going into this along with these. So the dry signals from this are going into the drums and then the wet signals from the reverb are getting mixed together into the drums. So if I was to bounce the output of this one now, I'd get the reverbs printed along with the dry signal. So that's a really good way to do it. It also keeps everything nice and clean. I know that these effects that I'm using here are for the reverb. You may want global uh, reverb set up for everything else as well. You can absolutely do that. Um, I just like to be able to control things a little bit like this. So just remember to root these when you are exporting stuff, especially for um, exporting stems. Uh, you'll want to root these into the stems that you're rooting everything else with. Or to create an extra stem with your send effects. Right, so I'm going to stop that there. We're going to jump into side chaining because a lot of it is quite similar to this concept of routing to auxiliary channels. Uh, we'll set up some more effects down the line as we go on with the track. But for now, let's head into the next video and take a look at side chaining.